Uh, but first, across the country, we've been feeling a bit unsettled as we adapt to new lives at home. Changes to daily routine. OK, we're talking about this. But what if you have autism or if you have children with autism? Someone who knows all about that. Let's go live to Christine McGuinness, who joins us now from uh, her home, uh, which she has to share with her husband, Paddy, Paddy McGuinness. Oh, um, so <laughs> that, that in itself must be a story, Christine. <laughs> Honestly, you two are so inspirational, the amount of time you spend together. This is new for me. We never spend this amount of time together. And we're doing all right. We have our moments. Yeah. Um, but we're doing OK. Well, you see, he entertains me on his Instagram feed because he takes pictures of you multitasking. Like, you, <laughs> like you, you do two jobs at once. You're on your exercise bike, say, for instance, and you're supervising the kids. Tell, tell us what it's like. He obviously finds what you do very amusing. <laughs> Well, I think that's just, you know, being a woman. We are experts at multitasking. Right now, I've, I've become a teacher this week. Yeah. I'm usually a taxi, a mom. I'm, I'm cooking at home more than ever. You know, I think that's what we're good at. So, yeah, I use bath time yeah. to get on my bike. But, but Christine, so many parents are doing that, of course, and they're homeschooling and it's really uh, not very easy. But for you, your three children, Leo, Penelope and Felicity, all have autism. So, and we know that, that uh, children, people with autism, they don't cope well with change. They like routine. So how challenging is this becoming for you? It's really, really difficult. And honestly, online, we're trying to keep it really positive and fun. Um, but at home, we are struggling. This has been so difficult this week, trying to explain to the children that we've got to stay indoors and we can't go out. When we've spent years and years encouraging our children to go to places and to go out at the weekend, um, now we're telling them to stay in and they are struggling. Um, my daughter Penelope really struggles with anxiety as well as autism. So she's already gone really quiet in herself. I'm not getting as much eye contact. Her communication isn't as good. So I am worried about what effect this is going to have if, if we're stuck in for another couple of months. But ultimately, we've got to stay home to stay healthy and stay well. Yeah, and what, what have you told them, the reason why? You said you've spent so long, you and Paddy, encouraging them out, encouraging them to go to, to school or play groups. Do you actually say... What do you say now? It is coronavirus. Do they know that word? So we were telling them that everything was being cleaned because um, that's what the school was telling them, that the, so the school's going to have a really good clean, the parks are being cleaned, the play centres are being cleaned. Um, it was just last night, actually, Leo um, came out the way. He, he said, coronavirus, what, what is the coronavirus? When is the coronavirus going to go away? And it really threw me. Um, and I just tried to keep it really simple, pick out the important bits, again, explain to him coronavirus is... is something that's affecting a lot of people and we need to stay away from it. So that's why we're staying home and um, explaining to them that everything will be safe again on one day. We will be able to go back out, but right now everything's being clean. Um, he said that a, another child at school had mentioned it to him last week and, um, and then he saw an advert somewhere. So we just need to be aware as well how much we've got the news on at the minute. Yeah. Um, you know, remembering that the children are listening and watching and probably picking up on, on more than what we would like them to. OK, routine, we know, with anybody we know who are children with autism, routine is all important. Do you have to, when the kids are at home, do you have to have a certain routine? Yeah, we are trying, we're trying to stick to the, the, the main things, obviously breakfast, lunch and tea at the same time as what it would be on a school day. We're trying to put some lessons in there. It's not going too well, but we're trying. Um, we're using a visual timetable to explain to them when we've got lessons. Um, we're doing a lot more outdoor activities, which is lovely, and I think that's really good for them. And I think amongst all of this, because they're dealing with so much change anyway and they are struggling, we're trying to make it as fun as possible, so doing things like arts and crafts. We're doing a lot of life skills. We're painting our nails, we're washing the cars. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're trying to keep this as fun as yeah. possible for you them. You um, mentioned... Um... <laughs> You mentioned their meal times there, yeah. Christine, you're keeping breakfast, lunch and dinner. You put a, a, a plea on your uh, social media this week, pleading with people to not stockpile because your children, and I, I, I presume a lot of children with autism, have very particular yeah. food needs, things, things that they will only eat. Um, yeah, and you need to be able to get hard. hold of those. 
Yeah, and, and if you looked at the comments underneath, there's hundreds, if not thousands, of families in the same situation where their child might only eat one brand of pasta and they can't get that anymore. And this isn't as simple as saying, oh, your child's fussy, that they'll eat if they're hungry. They won't. It's some children and adults with autism have really, really strong aversions to food. And like my son, for example, he will only eat brown bread for his toast. That's every morning he has that. That's part of his routine. Once I run out of this loaf of brown bread that I've got now, I haven't got any and I can't get any. Yeah. Um, I've got about six days to try and find a, a loaf of brown bread so that my son can have his breakfast. He's not going to have anything else. Yes, you need people to think about that. Now, World Autism Day is next Thursday, Thursday the 2nd of April. And uh, you've had a, a little role in all of this because on Channel 5, on Milkshake on Channel 5, uh, there is the, the cartoon, the animation, Daisy and Ollie. And uh, you and Paddy are making an appearance there. Oh, we're so proud of this, honestly. It's, this is a really fun family way. It's a, it's a child-friendly way to introduce an autistic character um, that hopefully will help a lot of others understand a little bit about autism. Um, it's done in a really sensitive, fun way. And, um, yeah, I can't wait for everyone to see it. Oh, that's nice. Well, anything that helps raise awareness, Christine, which you are so good at doing, because we know how busy you are um, with the children and, and your work as well. Um, listen, stay safe, all of you. Yeah, but before you go, before you go, I, I, I just couldn't take my eyes off your <laughs> balloons. What? What's, what's the occasion? <laughs> what's the occasion there? Hey, and what is um, big heart-shaped so, balloons? They were for Mother's Day. Listen, my husband is not romantic. Don't be fooled. It was Mother's Day. He got ah, me some. <laughs> I thought it might have been your birthday or something. That's that's. So where, where is he? He's he's downstairs. Hopefully, he's doing a PE class in the garden with the children whilst uh, I'm away. Yeah. I think he's... <laughs> Good Great luck stuff. with that. Great stuff. Uh, send him our love. Uh, love to the kids and you, of course. Stay well, darling, won't you? Thank you, and you too. Bye, love. Thank you, Christine. Bye. Thank you very much indeed.